My son wants new shoes and clothes. Give me your salary to get it for him. But mother, how can I give you my salary for David's shoes and clothes? That money is for me. I need it to survive. You don't have to survive. There are different knives in the kitchen and different oceans in the world. Stab yourself or drown in one. Mother? Stop calling me that, you unfortunate child. Your brother's going to inherit his grandfather's properties and will be rich. A girl? No, I want a boy. I don't want to give birth to a girl. Are you sure it's a girl that's in there? We're not interested in having a girl. My father wasn't wealthy, but his father was. However, before he married my mother, his father died, and in his will, he asked that none of his properties should be given to my father. The reason was because he was very irresponsible and didn't prove to be a son that could take care of the things he left behind. I'm his only child. How could he do this to me? My grandfather, in his will, had instructed that his properties be left in the care of my grandmother until my father had a son. When the son gets to 18 years of age, he'd be permitted to take over. My father was furious, but there was still hope. My mother tried to calm him down. I'll do my best to give you a son and 18 years will pass by quickly. My father was reassured by her words. My grandmother was still in her 60s, so she was very fit to handle everything. Two months after that happened, my mother was pregnant with me. You can imagine their excitement when they discovered the news. My father was even happier. However, that joy was cut short when they went for an ultrasound scan. They didn't want to believe that they'd been excited for nothing. They visited three more hospitals, but all showed the same results. You're having a girl. They hated me from that moment. When I was born, my mother even asked for the doctors to put me up for adoption, but they refused because my parents had no valid reason. They were forced to return home with me. I was only six months old when they took me to my grandmother to live with her. They began trying for another child again. One day, two years later, I was with my grandmother when she got a call from my parents. They'd finally had another child, my brother. I was excited. My small mind thought they'd finally come take me back for us to all live together, but it was far from what I imagined. The only time I ever saw my parents or my brother was when my grandma visited them with me and they always acted like I wasn't a part of the family. They both ignored me. A year later, my grandmother had to leave the country for something important and I was taken back to my parents. Can't you take her with you, mother? We don't need her here. Yes, mother, take her with you. My grandmother refused. She reminded them that I was their child and they must take care of me. They were eventually forced to accept me. My grandmother assured me that she'd be back soon, but for 10 whole years, she didn't return. Even though she wasn't present, she ensured to always send my parents and I money and took care of all my needs. However, my greedy parents took all the money. They refused to send me to the school my grandmother asked them to, didn't give me enough food, barely spent time with me and only took care of my brother. Once I was 18 and out of high school, my parents forced me to get a job. I did find one at a factory. It was extremely stressful, but I had no choice. My parents also stopped giving me money and kept everything my grandmother sent to themselves. David is more important than you. We would sell you off if we could. The only reason you're still here is because my mother knows you. Your existence is nearly useless to us. My job was barely enough to feed me, but I couldn't quit. I had no phone and couldn't contact my grandmother. Two months after I got my first pay, my mother suddenly came to me. Give me some money. The cash your grandmother sent us is gone. But I have no money, mother. The only money I have is for food. You evil child. Are you hiding money from us? Would you want your brother to get skinny like you? I tried to explain to her that my salary was little, but she wasn't having it. She grabbed my bag and searched through it. You stupid liar. Didn't you say you had no money? In tears, I begged her to return the money, but she refused and stormed off. I broke down into tears, frustrated at their behavior. I couldn't go to work that day as I had no energy because of how hungry I was. The next morning, I walked out of my room to see my parents and brother, enjoying a meal at the dining table. I walked to them, my stomach growling. Can I get some food, please? I'm starving. 
We have no food reserved for you. Get lost. Mother said you aren't part of our family, so leave, stupid. I turned away with my head bowed and my eyes dripping with tears. I decided to go to my workplace. You're fired. Please, leave. I knew he'd say that. It was a rule that any worker who was absent without notice would be fired. However, I was starving. I swallowed my pride and went on my knees. Please give me some food, I'm hungry. The man was touched seeing my tears and ordered some food for me. He asked if I had no parents and I explained my situation to him. My grandmother is the only one who cares about me. She's not in this country anymore and doesn't know how I'm being treated by my parents. I also can't tell her because I have no phone. He couldn't believe his ears. How can a parent treat their own child so badly? After our discussion, he gave me my job back. I was more than grateful to him. The next month, once I got my salary, my mother came again. I had no idea how she knew that I'd gotten paid. My son wants new shoes and clothes. Give me your salary to get it for him. But mother, how can I give you my salary for David's shoes and clothes? That money is for me. I need it to survive. You don't have to survive. There are different knives in the kitchen and different oceans in the world. Stab yourself or drown in one. Mother? Stop calling me that, you unfortunate child. Your brother's going to inherit his grandfather's properties and will be rich. You better buy him things now so he can have some pity on you when he's rich. I cried and begged, but she refused and stood on her words that I hand all of my salary over to her. When I refused, she attempted to grab my bag, but I was faster and took it first. I won't let you bully me anymore. Since you don't regard me as your child, at least let me have peace on my own. I regretted my actions immediately. She called my brother, who was only 16, but had grown so big. She doesn't want to give us money for the shoes and clothes you requested. Teach her a lesson. I knew my brother also hated me, but there was a little hope in me that he might stand up for his sister. However, that hope was shattered when he sent a resounding slap across my face. How dare you refuse my mother's request, you stupid girl. Your money belongs to us. I'm going to teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Due to how lanky I was, I couldn't fight back. While he continued beating me, my mother took all my salary and stood at a corner, laughing. When he was finally done, I was left bruised and in severe pains. I could barely sleep that night. The next morning, my father walked into my room. He saw my condition and still slapped me. Don't you dare disrespect my wife again. You're a mistake to us and you have no rights in this house. In pain, I got ready and left for work. My boss was shocked to see the condition I was in. He asked me to return home after someone helped me dress my wounds. Before I left, he gave me a phone he wasn't using anymore and told me to find a way to call my grandmother and inform her of what was happening. I thanked him and left. When I got home, I saw my father sleeping. I quietly took his phone, took my grandmother's number from it, and left the house again. Luckily, I was able to reach her. In tears, I explained everything to her. She was furious and promised to return the next day. I went back to the house, relieved to know that my sufferings would end the next day. I was in my room the next afternoon when I heard my grandmother's voice. Where's my granddaughter? I dashed out of my room. As she saw how I looked, she broke down in tears. You're all evil. I'm taking my granddaughter with me. Well, mother, we have no use of her here. You can take her. We're fine with our lovely David. Yes, take her. We don't need her in our lives. She shouldn't have been born in the first place. My grandmother was shocked hearing such words from them. She asked me to pack my things and go with her. We left the country the next day. My grandmother let me rest for a month before she began training me in the family's business. I asked her why, and she told me, You'll know soon. For two whole years, my parents never cared to ask about me. My grandmother continued sending them money. I'd become very good at the business that I was made to manage one of the branches. My father called my grandmother one day while we were both eating at a restaurant. Mother, David is 18 now. It's time to hand over the business to him, according to father's will. I'll be back in the country next week. We'll talk about this then. The next week, we both traveled back home. Even though they tried to hide it, I could see their looks of shock to see me. The lawyer walked in a few minutes later, and we all sat down. Now, my dearest son, 
We didn't read your father's will completely. Can you please read the rest of the will to them? And if his son is irresponsible too, my property should be handed to his daughter. And if she's like them, let it all be given to charity after my wife's death. Just like you, you've both trained your son to be evil-minded and reckless. Ava told me how you both made him a spoilt brat. Well, I'm sorry to break your hearts, but Ava here will be in charge of all the businesses. She's well-trained and also has a hard-working and relentless spirit. She's humble and kind, unlike you both. However, there is one other matter that needs to be addressed. What are you talking about, you old crone? Nothing is more important than my son getting what he is owed. But that's just it. He isn't your son. I hired a private investigator and he managed to get a DNA sample from your son. And sure enough, he isn't related to you. So I had them look into if you had adopted him and found out that you had illegally purchased him. These fine gentlemen are here to see to it that you get what you actually deserve. Just then, several police officers entered the room and put my parents in handcuffs and dragged them away, leaving my brother behind. He was stunned to hear that the people that he had thought of as his parents his whole life had actually just been his kidnappers. After that, my parents were sentenced to several years in prison for the crime of trafficking a child. I knew that I could probably get them in even more trouble if I pressed charges against them for the years of abuse against me. But I knew that once they were released from prison, that they would be poor and unable to get jobs on account of being criminals. It was enough that I was given everything that they had ever wanted and that their hopes and dreams were taken from them. It might sound cruel of me to say, but I feel no sympathy for them at all, and as for my brother. Well, he ended up living on the streets, and the last I heard of him. He was begging for money, and had become addicted to drugs. It's such a pity, really. He could have had a chance of a good life, had he never met my parents. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our best to reply to your comment. One night, while my brother and our parents were in the living room, I approached them. I politely inquired when I'd also be registering for my college education, but the first reply I got was a resounding slap from my father. That's for daring to dream of going to college like my son. We have no plans to fund your education any longer. Our son needs it more. My chest felt heavy with sadness. Was I not their child too? Why didn't I deserve to be in college? Right from the time we were kids, I've always been shown by my parents who their favorite child was. My name is Jason, a 27-year-old banker who had a very rough childhood. Now, you must be thinking it started when my brother was born. Well, guess what? It didn't. I was three when my brother was born, and from the little I can recall, I was unloved before then. I was always left at home with my nanny while they went out having fun. When my brother was finally born, it got worse. They barely spoke to me. All attention was on my brother. He took everything, including my nanny. My mother barely went out like she used to, but she still thought my brother needed the nanny more than me. From the tender age of four, I began doing basic things myself. Though, the nanny assisted me a little whenever she could. My parents thought I didn't deserve to be ahead of my brother in our academics. So for two whole years, they pretended that I was too sick to go to school. My grandparents, who were living in a country far away from us, visited our home one day. The day before, my mother had forced me to take some drugs that led to me stooling and vomiting uncontrollably for three straight days. I was just five. My parents felt so much pity for their poor grandson and gave some money to my parents to take me to a different and more experienced hospital. I saw tears dropping from my parents' eyes as they took the money, thanking my grandparents. Two days later, I heard they'd traveled back it seemed like the best news my parents got, aside from the extra money my grandparents had given them again. Throughout that year, they continuously extorted money from my grandparents, using my health as an excuse. When my brother was finally five, I was seven, and that was when I was finally pronounced healed and allowed to start school. I was forced to go at the same pace as my brother. As a result, we got into high school together and finished together. Life in high school was hell, Seeing how unfairly my parents treated me, my brother followed in their footsteps. We looked alike and had the same surnames, so we were often associated together by our peers, but my brother didn't like that. It made him angry. He refused to sit beside me and barely talk to me at school. 
To make matters worse, he would beat me up with his friends. Once when they beat me up, I resolved to report him to my parents. Their replies shocked my soul. Brothers play like that. You should consider yourself lucky that he even plays with a person as ugly as you. How dare you complain? You should be happy. I couldn't understand why they told to be happy about my brother bullying me. How could they be so delusional? It went on until we finally graduated from high school. On our graduation day, I was utterly embarrassed by my parents. I was awarded the best student in arts while my brother took his for sciences. I was called out first. While everyone cheered for me, I could see my parents' unimpressed looks from where I stood. After receiving my award, I returned to my seat which was in a row behind theirs. They refused to let me sit with them. Once his name was called out, my parents let out the loudest scream, hugging him and clapping excitedly as he walked out. While he was receiving the award, my mom's loud voice echoed through the whole hall. That's my son. It felt awkward because most people knew I was also her son, but I didn't get even a little reaction during my moment. When it was time for pictures, my parents took as much as my brother wanted with him. But when I tried to go up and take some with them, they stopped me. Get lost. I don't want your ugly face next to mine. You must be bold to think you could take pictures with us with that face of yours. I was unsure of so many things, but one thing I was certain of is that I wasn't ugly. Not to brag, but I look better than my brother. After high school, my parents informed me that I was old enough to start taking care of myself, and the only thing they could afford to give me was a roof over my head. It came as a shock to me until I got starved for two days. On the third day, while the three of them were away on an outing, our maid gave me some food and asked me to eat it quickly before they arrived. I was forced to go out in search of a job. After a week, I finally found one as a part-time worker at a popular restaurant. Luckily for me, even though the pay wasn't great, it came in on a weekly basis. In that way, I was able to feed myself. Meanwhile, my brother, they didn't expect anything from my brother. In fact, they even gave him an allowance, and yet he never did a single chore. They even paid for all of his clothes, and when he was old enough, they got him a new car. There I was, working my ass off while my brother enjoyed living life on Easy Street. When it was time for college, my parents didn't hesitate to register him at a popular and expensive school to study biochemistry. My dream was to be an architect, so I wanted to study architecture. One night, while my brother and our parents were in the living room, I approached them. I politely inquired when I'd also be registering for my college education. But the first reply I got was a resounding slap from my father. That's for daring to dream of going to college like my son. We have no plans to fund your education any longer. Our son needs it more. My chest felt heavy with sadness. Was I not their child too? Why didn't I deserve to be in college? I had questions to ask them, but my mouth was refusing to cooperate with me. Holding the cheek where I got slapped, I walked away to my room, my eyes burning from the tears. As I turned on my phone, I realized that the voice recorder had been on and had captured everything. I didn't want to keep it, but I couldn't delete it. After that, I got even more serious with my job and even got myself a second part-time job. Soon, I'd gathered some money to start my college education. I couldn't go to a grand one like my brother, but I was satisfied. Three months later, my parents called me into the living room. We need money for your brother's school. Give us your salary. That angered me. They refused to be responsible for me, and I was forced to do everything for myself and they dared to ask for my hard-earned money. I refused. I told them I didn't care about whatever my brother needed. I had things I wanted to use my money for. They flared up. In their words, I was nothing but a stingy brat who thought the world gave a damn about him. I discreetly turned on my sound recorder. I replied to them that I didn't care about whether the world recognized me. I reminded them of how badly they'd been treating me and how I'd been forced to do everything all by myself. I'm so depressed. I fight suicidal thoughts every day because, irrespective of how you both treat me, I wouldn't want you to lose a child. Well, we want it. Die, Jason. Die if you want. We feel ashamed already having a useless and ugly thing like you to call a child. Die. I'd never felt so broken. At that moment, my whole life crumbled before me. My knees nearly failed me. Without a word, and with tears streaming down my eyes, I stormed out of the house. Don't return here without the money. It was already late. With no idea of where I was going, I continued walking until I tiredly dropped on the ground by the side of the road. Seeing everyone's eyes on me, I stood up 
and went into a nearby restaurant. As I took my seat, I dropped my hands on the table, buried my face between them, and cried my eyes out. After crying, I lifted my head again. I didn't want to leave yet, so I ordered a cup of juice to pass time. While scrolling through my social media news feed, I came across a post of a lady going through something similar to my predicament. I dropped a comment to clear my mind too. In the comment, I told her how my parents were just like hers and what transpired that night. I added the two voice recordings, and I asked her to be strong and assured her that she'd be fine soon. Barely 10 minutes later, my phone began blowing up with different notifications. People were replying to my comments and sharing the voice recordings. They expressed how unfair my parents were, and some others shared their stories too. In 20 minutes, it went viral. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to delete the post, but there was no way that could help. Right there, I got a call from my grandmother, demanding if what I posted was true. I had no choice but to confess all my parents had been doing to me, right from the beginning. My grandmother was furious. I learned that, from the time they told her I was sick, she'd taken it upon herself to take care of me. Since my parents didn't have jobs, she took care of them too. She couldn't believe my parents would do such a thing to their child. She promised to be at our house the next day. Right after I got off the phone with her, my mom called. I suspected that she'd seen the post and didn't pick up. My father and brother called too, but I didn't pick up. That night, I spent the night at a hotel. The next day, my grandmother called to inform me that she was at my parents. I left the hotel and headed home to see my parents and brother on their knees in front of her. They begged for my forgiveness, but I refused. I'm sorry, but none of you deserve my forgiveness. My grandmother supported me. She asked me to pack my things and go with her to Canada. I didn't waste any time obeying her. That night, despite my parents' pleas and cries, I followed my grandmother. Now you must be thinking they realized their mistakes, and that's why they were begging. Far from it, they knew if I left, they wouldn't be getting any money from my grandmother anymore. They were too afraid of that happening, and I knew it, which made me hate them even more. For the next two years, I went to the best business school. My grandmother put me in charge of all her properties, Unfortunately, she passed away in a fatal plane crash years later. At her funeral, I saw my parents as they had come to pay their final respects. Once again, they begged for my forgiveness. I reminded them of my promise to never forgive them even after death. I returned to Canada after the burial and took charge of my grandmother's businesses while still going to school. My parents started calling and emailing me to start sending them money like my grandmother used to. They called me several times, but I refused to answer their calls. Later on, I changed my number, making it impossible to get a hold of me. A month later, they found the company and came there to beg me in person. I was surprised to see how much they'd changed, looking so tattered and unkempt. I showed them how irritated I was and warned them to never show their faces to me again. I had the security guards throw them out. One week later, I was informed that my house had been robbed and some of my belongings had been stolen. I alerted the police immediately, and an intense investigation began. From the CCTV camera, they discovered the thieves, my family. I immediately ordered that they find them. Three days later, they were found at the airport, on their way back home. They were instantly arrested. They begged desperately that I do not press charges on them, but I refused not to. They were taken to court, where all three of them were charged with burglary and theft. Everything they stole amounted to $6,000. They were each given 10 years in prison. I couldn't be happier. Hi there, my name is Darren, and growing up I struggled to get my parents to ever notice me. They were always way more focused on giving my older brother Brandon attention and praise. It was absolutely infuriating. I would study extremely hard and do my absolute best and get perfect grades, but they would instead fawn over Brandon and how well of an athlete that he was. I think that they were hoping that he would make it to the big time and become a professional athlete and that he would share his wealth with them once he did. Oh, Brandon, you were amazing in last night's game. Without you, your team would have lost for sure, but you managed to get them the win. Your mom is right. You carried your team the entire game. We're very proud of you. Thanks, guys. But I had no doubt that I would do well. That other team was weaker than Darren. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? 
Oh, be quiet, Darren. Let your brother enjoy his win. No matter what happened, they were always doing and saying things like that. Like when our report cards were sent out, they would praise Brandon and put me down. Good job, Brandon. You managed to improve your average. You only got one D on this report card. Yeah, I really struggled to do better than last time, and it shows. But you got mostly Cs. What about my report card? I managed to get the highest marks in the entire class. No one likes someone that brags all the time, Darren. Maybe if you would go to the gym from time to time and make a sports team like your brother, we would actually care a bit more. Mom's right. You can get all the good grades you want, but you're still fat and ugly, Darren. And that's the only thing that actually matters. It hurt for them to say such things, especially since I knew that some of it was true. I was quite a bit overweight, and I had never been very lucky with women, so I had always assumed that I was ugly. It really hurt my self-esteem, and I didn't see any way of making things better. So instead, I just focused on what I was good at, and that was studying really hard. I knew that no matter what I did, that it would never matter to my parents or Brandon. And so, I just ignored them. Later when it was time for Brandon and I to go off to college, we both managed to get scholarships. He got a football scholarship while I got an academic one. And of course our parents only praised him for his while they basically ignored me. Once the two of us went off to school, I focused on getting my degree in computer science while Brandon just partied and played football. My parents raved about the games that Brandon's team won and ignored the fact that he was beginning to party more and more. To me it looked like he was drinking a bit too much but they didn't see it and just kept praising him. During his senior year, there were several scouts for major teams that were watching him play, and unfortunately tragedy struck during one game where he was tackled and became injured. It was so bad that he was forced to sit out for the rest of the season and was unable to play any games, which made all the scouts lose interest in him. As a result, he became depressed and began drinking even more and was only rarely ever sober. Mom and Dad, I'm a bit worried about Brandon. He might be an alcoholic and might need serious help. Oh, just stop it. You're just jealous of your older brother. You just watch. Once he heals, he'll be back playing, and then he'll get scouted and play for a professional team. Then you'll eat your words. There was no convincing them, and so I just focused on graduating, and once I did on getting a full-time job so that I could move out. Once I was out on my own, things started to get better for me. My new work colleagues were such a good influence on me, and I started hanging out with them, and even going to the gym with them as well. Before long, I started to lose weight and gain confidence, and I even started dating. Back in high school, I found that the girls back then were only ever interested in the guys who played sports, but the women that I was meeting were much more mature and were more interested in people that were nice and fun to be around. Before long, I had a girlfriend and was actually very happy and feeling really good about myself. That is, until my parents called and reminded me about why I hadn't spoken to them in a long time. Darren, we need you to come home immediately. Hey guys, I can, but what's wrong? Why the urgency? It's your brother, his liver is failing and we need you to donate a large portion of your liver to him. Wait a minute, what happened? Is it because of his drinking problem? It doesn't matter what caused it. He needs a portion of your liver and his life is far more important than yours. Just get to the hospital and make preparations in case things don't work out. What do you mean by that? Is there a lot of risk for him? Yes. If he doesn't get this transplant, then he'll die. And there is a chance that taking a portion of your liver might end up killing you, but that's a risk that needs to be taken. If he doesn't get this transplant, then there is no way that he'll make to the professionals. Hold on, I'm not giving up my life just to give him a new liver that he will ruin with his addiction. If you two had listened to me and gotten him help, then this wouldn't even be an issue. The answer is no. How could you be so incredibly selfish? Your brother is in need and you're refusing to help him? Your life is pathetic. All you do is play on a computer all the time while your brother has a chance to make something of himself and actually have a future. Unlike you who won't amount to anything except maybe becoming the world's fattest man. I had enough of their abuse and so I lashed out at them. Not that it matters, but I'll have you know that I lost most of my weight and I'm in the best shape of my life. Not only that, but I have a girlfriend that is pretty enough to be a supermodel and smart enough to win the Nobel Prize. And maybe I don't make as much money as a professional athlete, but I do make over $150,000 a year. And the house that I bought for myself is huge. You always put me down growing up, and I never had the courage to stand up to you. Well, that ends today. Don't ever call me again. And just like that, I hung up on them. I did feel guilty for not helping my brother, 
but he had no one to blame for his current situation other than himself. And the fact that my parents wanted to use me to bail him out was inexcusable. I did look up the procedure that they had wanted me to take part in, and the success rate for the person that received the transplant was very low, and the risk for the person that was donating the organ was incredibly high. My parents fully expected me to gamble with my life on the slim chance that it would benefit Brandon, and I wasn't willing to take that risk. Over the next few weeks though, my parents kept calling me back and begged me to change my mind, and I eventually had to block their numbers so they couldn't harass me anymore. I even had to go so far as place a restraining order against them as they began to come to my house and beg me when they couldn't reach me by phone. However, they eventually stopped trying to bother me and I assumed that something had happened. Later, I found out that my father reluctantly had donated a portion of his liver and that he nearly died on the operating table. But thankfully, the surgery was a success and that both he and Brandon would recover. The only problem was that my parents still refused to acknowledge that Brandon needed help. And once he was well enough to do so, he went back to his old habits and started drinking heavily again. Because of his drinking problem, he was kicked out of college and he lost his scholarship and along with it, all of his hopes of ever playing professional sports. My parents were devastated and became absolutely miserable as they had placed all their hopes and dreams on Brandon's success. So much so that they hadn't saved a penny for their retirement and are forced to keep working well past the age where they should have retired. My father has even picked up a second job as a janitor to make ends meet, since they lavish Brandon with their savings. As for Brandon, he isn't very well, and he leeches off of our parents. Being a college dropout, he wasn't able to get a job that paid well. He cleans people's houses, but he still spends most of his paycheck on alcohol, and every time I see him, he looks worse and worse. I'm doing great, however. My girlfriend has since become my wife, and we are expecting twins in a couple of months. Although we've both decided that we are going full no contact with my family, and that although it will be hard on them, my children will never know their grandparents, but that's really for the best. I learned that family is very important, but that the family I was born into was incredibly toxic compared to the one that I made with my lovely wife. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. They charged down the aisle towards James, who turned and ran out of the church. We heard several gunshots, but later found out that no one had been shot. I had no idea what was going on, and I was so confused. Apparently, James had jumped into his car and sped away, and the police gave chase. The local news network got word that the police were involved in a high-speed chase, and they dispatched a helicopter to follow the chase. Growing up, I always thought that my wedding day would be a magical affair. I had dreamed that it would be full of dancing and fine dining, gifts, cocktails, and of course the man that would be the love of my life. But if you had told me that my wedding day would be as chaotic as it turned out to be, then I would have called you a liar. Although after hearing what happened, you might just think that I had made the whole thing up. At any rate, I suppose I should start at the beginning. My name is Tanya and I'm 24 years old. I met my fiance James about two years ago, and while it hasn't always been the picture-perfect relationship, it has been quite wonderful, actually. From the day we met, he has always been romantic and has gotten me flowers every week since I've known him. I've worked as an accountant ever since I graduated from college, and James has worked as a car salesman. My parents were very disgusted with James' job, and sure it wasn't anything special, but it paid well. And James really appeared to be good at his job as he had a very large house that was entirely paid for. And he drove a gorgeous luxury car. I tried so many times to get them to respect him. After all, what he did for a living didn't really matter as he was a good man and provided well for me. He could have worked at a fast food restaurant for all I cared, so long as he was a good and loving man, and James very much was. Why on earth are you engaged to such an awful man? Dad, James is not an awful man. He's a wonderful provider and partner. Provider? Just think about how he makes his money, though. He swindles people by selling broken down cars. All used car salesmen are sleazy. It was so aggravating that my parents thought so poorly of James, and it didn't help that James had no interest in what they thought. He wasn't interested in trying to change their minds at all. Oh, hon, what can we do? There must be a way to make my parents understand how wonderful you are. Why? They're allowed to not like me, and it doesn't matter if they do or don't. 
So long as you love me, then I have all that I need. I know, but it would just make things so much easier if they did. Well, we can't magically change their minds. Oh, and I wanted to let you know that I will have to head across the country to pick up a bunch of cars. Really? Can't you send someone else? Sadly, no. I need to go to make sure the deal goes smoothly, and I'll only be gone for about a week. It wasn't the first time that he had to go on such trips, but as we were getting closer to the date of our marriage, the more of an inconvenience it became. The day after James left, though, a detective came to the house and the whole interaction left me very confused. He knocked on my front door, and when I answered, he had questions for me. Hello there. I'm Detective Kirby, and I was just wondering if I could ask you and James a few questions. Is he home? Hi there. Um, no, James isn't here. Oh, that's no problem. Could you tell me where he is? Yeah, he went to go pick up several used cars. Does he travel often to pick up cars? Yes, sometimes he does. Have you ever traveled with him for these trips? No. Um, I have my own job and I can't go on trips like that as often as he does. I see. Well, I'll give you my business card. And if you could have James give me a call when he returns, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. I took the card and said goodbye to him, but was left feeling very uncomfortable. When James came home, I handed him the card and asked him why the police wanted to speak to him, but he brushed it off. Apparently, sometimes when he would buy cars from certain dealerships that parts of the cars could be stolen or even the cars themselves, and he had had to prove that all the cars that he had purchased and sold were legitimate. It sounded kind of odd, but I had no reason to doubt him. That night when we were getting ready for bed, though, I noticed that he had several bruises on his back and side, along with a large cut that was stitched up. Oh my god, James. What on earth happened? Oh this. It's nothing. One of the dealerships had a staircase that led up to their offices, and I slipped and fell down the stairs. It looks much worse than it actually is. It looks pretty bad. Please try to be more careful in the future. Oh, and we will need to make some deposits for the wedding venue, the band, and the catering in a few days. Oh, that's not a problem. A few days later, we went to see our wedding organizer, and James handed her a large stack of money to cover all the deposits. I had no idea where he had gotten all that money, but I just assumed that it was from the deal that he had just made recently. Everywhere we went, he used cash to buy things. From the restaurant that we went to, to when we got groceries, and then later when we booked our honeymoon. We were planning on going to Europe for a four-week trip through several countries, and James paid for the whole trip with cash, and it cost over $20,000. Hey, I'm just wondering, where did you get all that cash? What do you mean? It's all from my work. Okay, you just have a lot of cash on hand. You could put most of it on credit and that would be okay. Doesn't it worry you to carry that much cash on you? No, but I like to live a bit dangerously. And hey, I hate to do this since our wedding is only a week away, but I need to go on another business trip. Seriously? Will you be back in time? Oh, of course, yes, and I wouldn't dream of going on a trip this close to the wedding, but this is just such a good deal that I can't pass it up. The money I'll make from this deal will be completely worth it. I was so worried that he wouldn't be back in time. While he was gone, I went over to my parents for a visit and we ended up going for a walk. While on the walk, we started talking. Where is James? On a business trip, but he'll be back in a few days. Are you so sure about that? Yes, Dad, I'm sure that he'll come back. As we were talking, I noticed that we were being followed by Detective Kirby. Even though he was being sneaky, both my father and I noticed him. Who is that guy following us? That's a detective. The police? Why are they following us? Does it have to do with James? I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't know, but it's very odd. See, I knew that James was no good. He's probably stealing cars. Dad, he is not stealing cars. But yes, it is rather odd. I'll have to have a serious conversation with James about it when he gets back. I'm sure that there is a good reason for it. The next day, James came home and he walked into the house carrying a pair of large black duffel bags. He gave me a kiss and went to get changed. Later that night, we went out to dinner and had a wonderful time. The next few days before the wedding, everything was coming together perfectly. The weather was looking like it was going to be perfect. Then on day, we were to be married. I went to the church to get ready. 
James and I didn't see each other right up until when my father got ready to reluctantly walk me down the aisle. James looked incredibly handsome standing up next to the priest, waiting for me to join him at the front of the church to say our vows. When suddenly his smile faded and I was pushed aside harshly by Detective Kirby, who was followed by several police officers. They charged down the aisle towards James, who turned and ran out of the church. We heard several gunshots, but later found out that no one had been shot. I had no idea what was going on, and I was so confused. Apparently, James had jumped into his car and sped away, and the police gave chase. The local news network got word that the police were involved in a high-speed chase, and they dispatched a helicopter to follow the chase. James managed to avoid them for several hours, but he was eventually captured and was dragged to jail. Over the course of the next few days, it came out that James only used his car dealership as a front, and whenever he went for business trips that he was actually robbing banks. I couldn't believe it. I thought I had known who James actually was, and yet he had hidden where he was actually getting his money from. He had completely lied about who he actually was. After he was arrested, police came and searched our house, but when they didn't find anything, they left. When the trial began, it was obvious that the police had James dead to rights and had a mountain of evidence against him. Thankfully, no one had ever been hurt during any of his robberies, so the court took a bit of leniency on him for that fact. They did sentence him to prison for 20 years, though. It was such a harsh blow, and what was worse was that I was never allowed to talk to him at all in all this time. It wasn't until he had been sent to prison that I was allowed to visit him. When I did, he apologized for never telling me about how he really made his money, and that he would understand if I wouldn't wait for him. In fact, that he actually encouraged me to move on. He also leaned in close and whispered that the house and everything in it was now mine, and that I should move our bed and lift the rug when I got home. Confused, I left and went home and did as he had told me to do. And when I moved the bed and rug, I noticed that one floorboard looked a bit different than the rest. Testing it, I found that it was loose and when I lifted it up, I found a hidden compartment in the floor that had several duffel bags in it just like the ones that James had carried into the house just before the wedding. When I looked inside, they were full of money and I realized that there must have been a few million dollars in them. So that's where I am at the moment trying to decide if I should just keep the money and not tell the police or if I should report it. But even beyond that, I now have to decide if I even want to wait for James or if I will eventually move on. I have some hard decisions to make, I guess. What do you think? What should I do? Dad, I need money to attend university and get a business degree. You're too stupid to go to university. Just go and find a job as a truck driver or work in a restaurant. I passed high school, didn't I? I want to make something out of myself, just like Max. Ha ha! You're not like Max. You are dumb and lazy. You play video games all day. I am learning about strategy, Dad. I am not as dumb as you think. Hey there, I'm Jake, and let me share the roller coaster of growing up with my younger brother, Max. Our story starts in a regular home where Max was the golden younger child, always spoiled by my parents. They considered him to be more intelligent, and my parents figured he would be getting the best job and would go places. Myself? I grew up a normal kid and liked to go out with my pals and play video games. I did okay in school and wanted to go on to university and take business courses just like my brother. But my parents had other ideas. Dad, I need money to attend university and get a business degree. You're too stupid to go to university. Just go and find a job as a truck driver or work in a restaurant. I passed high school, didn't I? I want to make something out of myself, just like Max. Ha ha! You're not like Max. You are dumb and lazy. You play video games all day. I am learning about strategy, Dad. I am not as dumb as you think. Yes, you are. Long story short, I finished high school and got a job working as a data entry clerk for a large bank. I still stayed with my mom and dad who asked me to pay them rent to help pay for Max's university program. And then Max went to attend a business school in the United States that was expensive. Mom and dad were struggling with the fees, so I had to take on a second job to help out with all the bills. By night, I worked as an Uber driver, and by the time I went home, I was dead tired. Still, I found an online course where I decided to learn how to build an app. 
For four years, I worked 80 hours a week and had very little social life because I was also studying on my own time. Finally, it was time for Max to graduate and we had a big party. Max also told us that he was engaged to get married and was looking forward to a big wedding. Congrats on bringing home the nice degree. It's been four long years. Someone's got to do it. Since I am the intelligent one in this family, I have to do all the hard work and study to earn my degree. It wasn't easy. I worked hard too. Mom and dad told me to work two jobs to help pay for your education. Why not? Our family cannot get ahead without me. I told you I am the superior brainy one in this family. Small minds deserve to work in small jobs. I don't think so. I only did this as a favor to you. You owe me big time. You had all the time to study and get good marks. Put a lid on it, Jake. By the way, thanks for helping me with the wedding. I thought that when Max graduated, I would be able to work only one job. But no. Mom and dad told me to continue with the second job to help pay for Max's wedding. I obeyed my parents because I was still living at home. I continued to work for many months, and one day, I was so tired at work that I fell asleep at my desk. What are you doing, Jake? Sorry, I must have dozed off. Are you on your break? No, sorry, I'm not. Sorry, Jake. I have to report this to HR and you may be suspended or terminated. I was sick to my stomach when I heard this from my manager. She marched me to HR and told the manager there that I was sleeping on the job. They were not happy, and next thing you know, they decided to lay me off. As I drove away, it was raining hard. Before I knew it, some young newbie driver hit my car, damaged beyond repair. I told my dad that I lost both jobs, and he was very disappointed in me. Dad was so mad, he even decided to kick me out. He told me that I owed them for this month's rent. I had no money, and with no place to go, I went to the library. At the library, I met my old buddy, Barry, from high school. He and I used to play video games. He was kind to me and allowed me to stay at his place. He also helped me get a job working in the restaurant as a waiter. One day, Max walked hey into you. the restaurant with Hi his Max. new bride. You ruined my wedding. Thanks to you, I couldn't go to Cancun and celebrate. Mom and dad said there was only enough for a smaller wedding celebration at the Vista Hotel in the city. Yes, I lost my job and my car. Loser. I can't rely on my brother. It would be nice if my brother could buy me a nice wedding present. I gave you everything because I worked two jobs to help pay for your school and the wedding. Like what? How about a BMW? How about you get out of here? You can't talk to me like that? I am the smarter one. You are the dumb one. Working manual jobs. You should be happy that I am talking to you right now. Get out before I have you thrown out. Fortunately, the manager of the restaurant saw what went on, and he didn't like Max's attitude towards me. He walked Max to the door, but before he could send him off, Max decked him, and my manager lay on the ground motionless. The cops came, but somehow Max explained that he was the victim, and they let him walk away. I call my mom sometimes, and she tells me that Max is doing great. He is the chief financial officer of a medium-sized company. They are very proud of him. She also told me something else that dad doesn't want her to talk to me anymore. I was so upset that I hung up the phone, crying. Over time, I continued taking my online course and learned how to make several apps. Last week, I got a call from the manager of my old job at the bank. Hello? Jake, how are you? I understand that we let you go by mistake. You were doing a great job as a data entry clerk. You were fast and never made any mistakes. For five years, you always came to work on time, and you also pointed out some areas where we could save money. You made one mistake and we are willing to forgive that. Will you come back? Yes, in a heartbeat. I will never sleep on the job again. When can I start? Tomorrow? I think you would be great as an office manager. Would this amount be enough for you? I looked at the salary that she offered me, and it was double the salary I had received before. Of course, I took the job, and I also called my mom and dad to give them the good news. I talked to my mom, but my dad was still mad at me because of Max's wedding issue and refused to talk to me. Although I was sad that my dad didn't want to talk to me anymore, I went to work as usual. At night, I worked on the app and decided to create something just to help customers manage their money. I showed it to my manager, and she loved it. Instead of just handing it to them, 
I told them that I would sell it to them for $250,000 because I worked on the app during my own time. They accepted, and I was so happy. My app made the front page of a business story in the newspaper which caused my dad to call me up the next day. Jake, my son, I missed you. There was something in his voice though that felt off. It just seemed like he was hiding something that was bothering him. What's wrong, dad? You seem upset. This isn't easy to say, but Max is a gambler and he used all his money to spend on casinos in Las Vegas. He lost big and he also borrowed from me. I am not able to pay for my mortgage. Sorry, dad, I can't help you. You didn't help me all these years when I needed you most. You left me when I had nothing. I worked night and day to help pay for Max's schooling and wedding. You always insulted me and said I was stupid. No thanks, I can't help you. Please, son, I am your dad. I refused to budge, and finally, my dad went on his way. I heard Max owed some loan sharks millions of dollars, and he is on the run from a criminal organization. The mafia has a price on his head because of the money that he owes. My dad ended up living in a homeless shelter. He fought with another resident, and someone stabbed him in the back while he was sleeping. He never recovered from the stab wounds. Because my mom was always nice to me, I allowed her to live with me in a fancy townhouse. It goes to show that even though I wasn't the favorite son, I finished first. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed and we will try our best to reply to your comment. Our mother was beginning to become verbally abusive to my brother and I. You kids are such leeches. Can't you do anything for yourselves? Why must you be complete idiots? Mom, stop it. Why are you being so mean? Because I never wanted to have you crotch goblins. Sadly, when she drank, she was only worse and she began drinking more often as well. Our father would regularly catch her hitting one of us and would threaten to call the police on her if she wouldn't stop. That's enough. If you don't stop, I swear I'll call the police and have them haul you away. You spineless idiot. You won't dare call the police on your wife. The hell I won't. You just try me. You know that they say that blood is thicker than water, but I have come to learn that the closest and best family is the one that you make. I think that once you hear my story, that you will agree though. It all began when I was 12 and my younger brother Tim was 10. Our parents were constantly bickering and to make matters worse. Our mother was beginning to become verbally abusive to my brother and I. You kids are such leeches. Can't you do anything for yourselves? Why must you be complete idiots? Mom, stop it. Why are you being so mean? Because I never wanted to have you crotch goblins. Sadly, when she drank, she was only worse and she began drinking more often as well. Our father would regularly catch her hitting one of us and would threaten to call the police on her if she wouldn't stop. That's enough. If you don't stop, I swear I'll call the police and have them haul you away. You spineless idiot. You won't dare call the police on your wife. The hell I won't. You just try me. Thankfully, our father didn't have to find out if his threat would work as one day we all woke up and our mother was gone. She had snuck around the house in the middle of the night and took everything of value and had disappeared. As if that wasn't bad enough, she even emptied the joint bank account that she shared with our father. There had been tens of thousands of dollars in that account, and she took and ran off somewhere. The days after were very hard on our father. On the one hand, he was relieved as our mother had been a terror not only to me and my brother, but to our father as well. While she was abusive to us, she was doubly so towards him, and he had the bruises and cuts to prove as much. Our father had to take out a large loan from the bank in order to help us get through the first few months after our mother left. He even received divorce papers in the mail from her at one point, solidifying the fact that she had no intentions of ever coming back home. Even though she was gone, the bills kept coming in order to pay back the loan and to keep us afloat. Our grandmother moved in with us and my brother and I couldn't have been happier. While our father would work as much overtime as he could, our grandmother would spend time with us. She would bake for us all the time and was extremely supportive of us. She would constantly tell us how much she loved us and how proud of our grades she was. It was the exact opposite of what living with our mother was like. For the next few years, our grandmother kept us company when our father was at work. We could tell that he was beginning to burn out, although he had nearly paid off the loan that he had taken out and had even saved up a sizable amount of money as well. 
but he still worked a ton of overtime and rarely had a day off. He was determined to make sure that he would be able to pay for school for my brother and I once we graduated from high school. However, one day, our grandmother became ill and within a few weeks, she passed away. It was so incredibly painful to lose her. Aside from our father, she was the only real positive influence that we had had in our lives, and losing her was almost too painful to bear. As a result, our father took less and less overtime, but by that point, he had managed to become debt-free and had saved up more than enough to cover our schooling. He began to spend more time with us and even had more free time for himself as well. It was a difficult year after our grandmother passed away, but we needed to keep on living and we knew that she wouldn't want us to cry forever. One day, our father came home and told us that he had an announcement. Hey guys, I don't know how you're going to feel about this, but I met someone and I would really like for you to meet her. Her name is Camilla and she is very important to me. That's wonderful, Dad. If you really care about her, then we will too. Soon after that, we were introduced to Camilla and we hit it off immediately. There was just something about her that struck a chord with us. She was so nurturing and friendly and genuinely seemed eager to learn all about us. Both my brother and I could find no fault with her and were genuinely happy when our father announced that he would be marrying Camilla. They had a simple ceremony and after that Camilla moved in with us. However, at that time, I was getting ready to head off to school. I had been accepted into an architectural school and had even lined up a firm that had agreed to hire me on after I graduated. Things were beginning to look up. A couple years later, my brother was accepted into medical school and was planning on becoming a surgeon. Camilla and our father constantly would call us and tell us how proud they were of us. And going home on weekends was such a delight. Camilla would go all out and bake tons of delicious desserts for us and make sure to cook our favorite meals as well. Going back to school was hard sometimes since home life was just as good as when our grandmother was around if not even better since our father was around more too. Once I graduated, the firm that had promised me a job kept their word and assigned me to some simpler jobs. I worked under a few senior architects and learned a lot about designing fascinating, but also practical buildings, and it wasn't long before. I'd proven myself worthy of bigger projects, one of which made it onto the local news since I had added a lot of really interesting artistic flares to the building. People loved the design and it had become the talk of the town. Things just seemed like they were really going well for us, but then tragedy found a way to weasel its way back into our lives. Our father had a heart attack and needed to have open heart surgery. My brother was kicking himself for not being able to do the surgery himself, but we all told him that even if he had graduated by that time, that it was better off that he didn't, as there was no telling if our father would make it through the surgery. And sadly, he passed away during the operation. All those years of working so much overtime had taken their toll on him, and he passed away much too young. In his will, he left everything to Camilla, and both my brother and I were okay with that decision. After all, we were doing quite well on our own and didn't really need the money, but Camilla insisted on sharing it with us. It just further proved how good of a person she was and how much she truly cared for my brother and I. She had become our true mother, and we had pretty much forgotten our birth mother when suddenly I got a phone call from her. Hey there, brat. Listen, I heard that your father finally passed away and I just wanted to check in and see if there was any way you could share some of your inheritance with your dear old mother. You can't be serious. You've ghosted us all these years and when you had been around, you were terrible to us. Why would we give you anything at all? Because I'm your mother. You owe me for giving birth to you. I would never give you a single dime. You can rot in hell for all I care. I had thought that that would be the end of it, but a few days later I got a call from Camilla saying that a strange woman was at her house threatening to break in. I instantly knew who it was that was harassing my stepmother and I rushed over terrified about what my birth mother might do. When I arrived, I saw my birth mother pounding her fists on the front door of Camilla's house. I have no idea how she figured out where my father and Camilla had lived, but she did and was now demanding that Camilla come out and give her her dead husband's money. Get out here, you whore. I won't let you steal that money from me. It's rightfully mine. What are you doing? Have you gone completely insane? Stay out of this. This is between me and the homewrecker inside. Homewrecker? You divorced my father and stole all of his money years before he met Camilla. What are you talking about? Just then, my mother's eyes went red and she slapped me so hard that I fell to the ground. 
She then stood over me and was about to start kicking me when the door behind her opened and Camilla came out. I had never seen Camilla angry before, but she was furious at my mother for having struck me. She rushed over and picked my mother up overhead and threw her to the ground. I have no idea how she had that much strength in her, but every time my mother tried to get up and rush at Camilla, she would grapple her again and throw her down. By the fifth time, my mother was winded and unable to get back up. It was then that I called the police and had then dragged my mother away. In the weeks that followed, we had the courts put a restraining order against my mother that made it so that if she came within a hundred feet of either my brother or I or Camilla, that she would be arrested and put in prison. Thankfully, we didn't have to enforce it though. As not long after the police dragged her away, my brother heard from one of his colleagues at the hospital that our mother had been admitted. She was dying from liver failure and had needed the money to pay for a surgery that could have saved her life. Sadly, it was too late by then and not long after she was admitted, she ended up dying a very painful and lonely death in the hospital. I wish I could say that had she asked for the money in order to have surgery that either my brother or I would have helped her, but honestly, I don't think that we would have. She had been so rotten and abusive to us and we truly didn't want anything to do with her. The years when she was gone and out of our lives were the best we could have had, and when she came back into our lives, all she brought was anger and violence. To be honest, she wasn't my mother. She was only the woman that gave birth to me. Camilla, however, is my true mother, as she didn't hesitate at all to come to my defense, and unlike my birth mother, Camilla actually showed me love. So some people can say that blood is thicker than water, but I respectfully disagree. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.